Hello again and welcome to the DYOR crypto course presented by Hacken.ai and Third Academy. This week we discuss in great detail the ways to check product health so that you can invest intelligently. We'll show you how to research product potential using three key factors, value proposition, competitive advantage, and business model. For value proposition, try to understand what's the key feature that provides the most value to users. For competitive advantage, find the differences in similar products. This can be the novelty of an idea or a cheaper price. For competitive advantage, find the differences in similar products. This can be the novelty of an idea or a cheaper price. For business model, Research how the project is monetized and how the revenue streams work. If this information is not publicly available, ask their community about it. Let's start by examining how to research product usage. Product usage can be analyzed with five key factors. Brand demand, trading value, total value locked, token price, and unique active wallets. To research brand demand, you will need to access SEO tools like ANREFs. The idea is to research a product name as a keyword. High search volume per month indicates a top of the funnel demand. To research trading volume and price, you can see these services. GoinKiko.com, DeFiPulse.com, CoinMarketCap.com, and CryptoCompare.com. Data on unique active wallets is harder to come by, so you can use these services. Etherscan.io, Glassmo.com, and Dune.com. Product monetization can be researched as well. There are four key factors. Fees, revenue, treasury, and price. To research fees, you should look into the blockchain transactions of the specific project. The charges apply for each transaction, whether in swapping, staking, or any other interaction with the blockchain, are a good indicator of how the project generates fees. Resources like etherscan.io provide insights into such transactions and the associated fees. Revenue is a clear indicator of a project's financial health, which can be explored by understanding the project's business model and how it earns income. This may be from transaction fees, services, or even yield farming rewards. Comprehensive details can often be found in the project's white paper and aggregators like CoinGecko.com and DeFiPulse.com. Treasury management is crucial in a crypto project's sustainability and growth. The treasury size and management can be investigated through on-chain data and governance proposals. Services like DeepDAO.io and Etherscan.io can be a window into a project's treasury. Finally, price is an important but volatile metric. It should be analysed in relation to other factors mentioned to get a comprehensive view of the project's financial health. Crypto price tracking platforms like CoinMarket.com and CoinGecko.com are great places to get accurate and up-to-date price data. How to research a product roadmap. Examining a crypto project's roadmap can be boiled down to four key factors. Clarity of goals, milestone achievements, timeline, and technical feasibility. To assess the clarity of goals, you need to dive deep into the project's white paper and official announcements. A clear, precise roadmap will include specific objectives and development plans. If these are vague or too broad, it could be a warning sign. The milestone achievements refer to the completed objectives set out in the roadmap. It's essential to verify whether the team has successfully met their milestone. Websites like coinmarketcow.com and coincheckup.com can be handy in tracking these milestones. Timeliness is crucial in a roadmap. Projects that consistently meet their deadline reflect positively on the project's reliability. Again, Using platforms like CoinMarketCal will help track whether a project is meeting its deadlines. Analyzing technical feasibility involves some technical knowledge. 
It's crucial to ensure that the goals set out in the roadmap are technically possible within the stated timelines. Although requiring a different level of user competence, GitHub and Bitbucket can help. Advanced description of tokens. How tokens are set up have profound implications. As we discussed earlier, tokens represent some value within the ecosystem. They can be used to finance a company's operations, pay fees for transactions, and represent a stake in the project. Token holders and stakers can receive various benefits like airdrops, roles in their community, or governance rights. But with rights, a burden of responsibility is attached to the issuers of tokens. Tokens can be used to create an economy. Bitcoin was created to be a global monetary system. Along the way, its purpose has evolved into a store of value, an inflation hedge, digital gold, or a scam, depending on who you ask. The same thing happened to Ethereum. From being a humble funding mechanism and free paying token, it became a multi-purpose juggernaut. The key factor in the token success is, is it being used? And for a token to be valuable, it has to solve some economic or governmental problems for a community of users. Hence, an issuer is pressured to establish an economic system that uses a token. How projects describe their tokenomics. Whenever a project is planning a release token, they have to create an explicit plan of its roles in the ecosystem and who will be the beneficiary. Having a detailed understanding of token use cases should give information to potential users on why they might need it, as well as how much they might need it to spend to achieve their goals. This is clearly not a simple matter and each project may take a different road. And disclosing all beneficiaries of the token mint is a standard practice in the financial world to prevent price manipulation. Here is the token allocation of a protocol described earlier. How tokens are created with the help of smart contracts. Not all tokens are created the same way, but for one to be created on Ethereum network, an issuer must develop and deploy a smart contract. This contract should have mint and transfer functions, which would allow the developer to create and distribute tokens. Let's continue exploring Ribbon.Finance and use their token as an example of typical mint and distribute action. In the token transferred field, we find that tokens have been minted out of null address and transferred to a multi-sig, a wallet controlled by multiple parties. Multi-sigs significantly increase the security of funds and are a common practice in the crypto industry. Token transfers after token generation event. The next step of our analysis is to follow the initial transaction and see where coins went after the first transfer. Our goal is to see the first transaction in this multi-sig wallet. To do that, go to the last page of the list of transactions. The oldest transfer on the list is a token generation event. But all following transactions represent the distribution of coins between various involved parties. 30 million tokens went to airdrop contract, 450 million to the community treasury, and etc. Introduction to token allocation. We got a little bit familiar with the token allocation process in previous parts, but why do we care so much about it? If there are a million tokens minted, among which only 10% are available on the open market, the price per token would significantly be higher than if 100% of the tokens are available. But if circulating supply would suddenly increase, the price would fall proportionally. Therefore, we need to understand which parties control which amounts of tokens and where they are allowed to dump them on the market. Team allocation. As we know by now, there are multiple parties who usually receive token allocations. First and foremost are the team members. Many programmers, business developers, and executives work for the percent of the total token supply. In the example below, you will find a token allocation scheme of the Jones DAO, a community-driven project to create sophisticated investment strategies. Hacken does not advise you to invest in any projects, and all examples given here are for educational purposes only. According to the scheme, we can expect that team members will receive 12% 
of 10 million Jones tokens vested for 18 months. And here they are, divided into five transactions. Investors and advisors. Another, arguably more important group of our purposes are investors and advisors. These people are the organizations help to fund and shape operations at the early stages of a project. In the example of Jones Dow, investors are under category of private sales and receive 9.7% of the total allocation. To find it in Blockchain Explorer, we should look for an approximately similar number, and here it is. Another part that falls under the investors category is Olympus Dow, as they helped launch the project. We are looking for a transaction for approximately 330,000 tokens. There are two such transactions here which may be valid. We know, however, that the recipient of the first transaction is a contract called Staking Rewards. So it's the second transaction that we need to look at. Decentralized projects are incentivized to acquire as many token holders as possible. That is why they are creating multiple ways to distribute coins between people. Continuing to explore Jones Dow, we can see that the incorporated three distribution methods are public sales, airdrop, and platform rewards. Platform rewards are distributed directly from the token smart contract and can be identified by the from column. These transactions would be sent from the null address. Infrastructure. Last but not least, a group of addresses where tokens may go after they've been minted, to places where regular people can easily accumulate tokens. These are both centralized and decentralized exchanges, as well as bridges. Jones Dow did not explicitly transfer coins to the infrastructure, but here, in this example from our previous case study, Ribbon.Finance. In this transaction, they transferred 1% of the token supply to Uniswap, the largest decentralized exchange. Introduction to distribution within the community, airdrops farming. In the previous chapter, we touched on a number of definitions that might puzzle some people. What is airdrop? It is a method of sending tokens to the early participants in the protocol and is done to reward those who use protocols before they become big. Community rewards or liquidity mining is a way to incentivize people to put their funds in a protocol and earn additional rewards. Sometimes tokens are given to another protocol to establish a collaboration and involve people from several communities. As an example of that, can be found at Aave, where you receive an optimism governance, token stop of the regular rewards. These programs are temporary in nature. Introduction to Types of Token Allocation The typical way to allocate coins after the mint is to move them to a multi-sig that belongs to the team members or community treasury and then distribute across investors, advisors, marketing, foundation, airdrop participants and all the necessary smart projects. It is also common practice for teams and investors to lock up tokens for a period of time to show confidence in the project as well as protect the public from token dumps. Vesting schedule. One way to lock up tokens is to have a vesting schedule, an algorithm that unlocks coins as time progresses. There are multiple ways to do vesting, from linear unlocks where funds are released regularly each day, week, month, and year, to continuous streaming of funds. Since we know how to interact with smart contracts through blockchain explorers, Let's read a vesting schedule on Ribbon.Finance Treasury. Here we are interested in the starting and ending date of vesting, which can be read through the start time and end time methods. Note that the time you get from these methods has to be converted from Unix to a human readable format. There are services that can help you do this. Another interesting method in this contract is the cliff period. It's a bit hard to see here, but the cliff period of this vesting schedule is zero, meaning that the release of funds started from the start time. However, if it is larger than zero, it would mean that there is a period in the beginning when funds are not released. For example, if a vesting schedule is planned for two years with a cliff of one year, coins will start to be accessible only after 12 months. 
tokenomics description as a part of white papers. White papers are very important to understanding as much as possible about the project and covers most key aspects of the plan and who is involved. If you want to do your own research, it is of utmost importance to be able to find white papers that crypto companies provide. Not only do you become familiar with all risks and benefits of using this protocol through reading the white paper, but you also become acquainted with the token economy or tokenomics of a project. We have already established the importance of token allocation and will now focus on where to search for tokenomic descriptions. Official website, find through CoinGecko. First and foremost, our primary source of information about the token is the official website of the project. If you want to be sure that you are in the right place, use CoinGecko or similar aggregation tools to search for official web pages. You will most likely find tokenomics under the token, white paper, or docs part of their website. Gitbook. Many projects use Gitbook as a way to create and maintain their documentation. In the link above, an exchange called GMX used Gitbook structure to construct the detailed documentation of their project. In there, you can find all necessary contract addresses, their staking proposal, token supply, and much more. GitHub. Another great resource to find information about tokenomics is GitHub. It might be tricky for someone unfamiliar with code to navigate there, but we will do our best to help you search for original sources. GitHub is a portal for developers to release and maintain their code. It also helps develop documentation for the code, therefore, some teams are moving their tokenomics design to this portal. Here is an example of a crypto company having their token description at GitHub. To find it, you might want to search for it through Google or by clicking the GitHub link on the official page. By now, we've learned how to search for information provided by the team and what has actually happened on a blockchain. The reason why we make an emphasis on these two aspects is that companies do not always follow exactly what they say. There might be multiple reasons for inconsistencies. It's hard to build an ecosystem. It's a living and breathing organism that can be subject to change. The purpose of token existence might change along the way. But the crypto industry is full of shady behavior. And knowing how to get to the truth will bring you several steps closer ahead of other users. Thank you for watching this week's course on how to check token transactions. Remember, your success in crypto begins with informed decisions, and that starts with doing your own research. We are Hacken, and we are here to help you and the industry verify and gain trust in Web3 transactions. We are looking forward to seeing you at our next live event from the 3rd Academy Metaverse on November 9th at 4.30pm UTC. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more valuable insights into the world of cryptocurrency. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay ahead in the crypto game.